How many planets are there? Nine is what we were taught. But as telescopes get stronger and astronomers learn more about our solar system, long accepted facts become fallacies. Pluto had been considered a planet for 76 years, but Pluto lost its planet status after an astronomer at Caltech discovered that Pluto wasn't so special after all. His name is Mike Brown. Brown and other astronomers have since found hundreds of large balls of ice like Pluto circling the sun at the far reaches of our solar system. Demoting Pluto leaves us with eight planets. But Mike Brown is preparing another surprise. He is sure there is a real ninth planet way out far beyond Pluto. He hasn't seen it yet, but he expects too soon. He believes the real planet nine is huge, and it's out Certain. there. Certain, yeah. That's a rare thing to say for a prediction for a scientist, and I'm willing to say it. You do know how mind-boggling this sounds. I mean, a new planet hasn't been discovered for... 170 years. I believe you think it looks like this animation over my shoulder here. You know, we took a little artistic license and put some lightning on the dark side of it because it might have lightning on the dark side of it. We think that it's somewhere between 10 and 20 times more massive than the Earth. And we haven't seen it? We can't see it? It's so far away that it's actually just at the edge of what our biggest telescopes on the ground can, can possibly see because it's so far away. So let me be clear. You believe that this huge planet exists, and, and you believe that it is, in fact, huge, but we can't see it? Yeah, and uh, I, I get that question a lot. Like, why can't we see this thing? If it's so big, it's bigger than the Earth, it could be as big as Neptune. And the simple thing is that it is basically the laws of physics. These objects uh, are fairly cold, so the only way we can actually see them is reflected sunlight. So the sun's light has to go all the way from the sun out to the object, reflect off the object, and comes all the way back to Earth. And what that means is if you move something twice as far away, it gets 16 times fainter. That's how the map Things get faint very fast out there. So explain this for a non-scientist like me. We have telescopes that we're looking back to the beginning of time. We're looking to the far, far edge of the known universe. And we have Hubble out there with all of these eyes from Earth looking at the sky, we, we, we can't see this planet? We could see it if we knew where it was. It's, it's probably bright enough to know, if we knew where it was, we could point a telescope at it and we'd see it. The problem is we don't know where it is. So a lot of
these other, uh, looking back at the beginning of time type things, are looking at particular things in the sky. They're looking at particular quasars or galaxies, these, these uh, extraordinarily distant objects that are very exciting objects. But in general, um, you kind of know where those objects are. This object, we have no idea where it is. A billion miles away. It's also hard to find because it has an enormous orbit. Planet Nine, we think, takes something like 15,000 years to go around the sun. Yeah, 15,000 15, years? 15,000 years. To make one orbit? One orbit. To search for Planet Nine, Brown goes up Mauna Kea, the big mountain on Hawaii's Big Island, to use the big telescope, the Subaru. Brown doesn't look directly through the telescope. He monitors pictures it's taking of the same sections of sky on successive nights and then compares them hunting for movement. We have to very systematically look at every patch of sky here, 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 here. And what we're looking for is, is, is actually kind of simple. We take a picture one night, we come back the next night, all the stars, all the galaxies are in the same spot night after night after night. And Planet Nine, when we see it, will slowly move across the sky. And will look something like this. Brown's discovery 11 years ago that changed the way we think of the solar system. Using pictures from successive nights, Brown discovered this Pluto-sized object, which led to the demotion of lovable Pluto. That they know exactly where Nibiru and the brown dwarf star, I believe they know where they're located. I believe these interviews on 60 Minutes is the beginning of some type of disclosure operation, getting this information out there. Now, who would want to be known as an astronomer that mathematically found a planet, but we don't have any telescopic photographs of it? And just like the reporter states, well, okay, we have the Hubble Space Telescope out there, hundreds of millions of dollars of space junk, but yet your math is not giving you the location of this large rogue planet that is said to have a 10 to 20,000 year orbit around our sun and possibly the last time it came through tilted our sun. So this interview doesn't make a lot of sense to me.